What's going on guys? Today we're going to get into something very, very different. What is the hardest way to build wealth, 3.5 million to $5 million net worth in the next 10 years? Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. Now, why do I come off what is the hardest way? One of the things that I consistently have seen here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok is what is the easiest way? And interestingly enough, the easy way doesn't seem to work. It doesn't seem to work. It doesn't seem to pan out. And I have a feeling one of the big issues is YouTubers, TikTokers, Instagrammers, and Facebook real people are making content to be viewed, not making content to be helpful. So I want you to watch this video from the beginning to the end so you can get everything that you need to do to build wealth once again we define wealth as 3.5 to 5 million dollars net worth because there's a lot of people build wealth build wealth build wealth what is building wealth what is it build wealth build wealth build wealth build credit build credit build credit and you consistently see these videos talking about building something that doesn't give you the art doesn't give you the definition doesn't give you the information that you need to actually build wealth let's go ahead ahead and begin. Number one, the fastest way to get rich, and you can go to the Forbes list and you can go to Google and look at the world's richest people and you will see the fastest way to build a large significant net worth is start a business. So let's talk about starting a business. There are many things here online talking about starting a business. And Honestly, I feel that you should stay away from that stuff because number one, I want you to go into a room that doesn't have the television, maybe leave your phone in the living room, take a pen and paper and sit down and write out what you think that you may be interested in. Because here's the thing, there are people who are selling used clothes, making $300 million a year selling used clothes, but they like selling used clothes. There are people out there who are making money selling camping gear. There's a million and one businesses. There's not just a few handful of businesses that are pushed by the YouTube marketing department. The YouTube marketing department puts out a lot of information about certain businesses and literally leaves out the majority of businesses. You should get into Toro or you should get into Airbnb or you should get into Facebook, Amazon, or you should get into a Walmart store and they leave so many businesses out. What you should do once again, take some time, take a few moments, go into a quiet room and really think. Now, for some of you, this is going to be easy. For some of you, this is going to be very, very hard um, because you're not used to thinking. And thinking is something that's going to open up the door to many, many things. And once again, you should try to come up with 30 ideals based upon what you like. Let's say you're a young guy and you like tattoos. You really like tattoos. So what you should do is I like tattoos. From that list, write as many business and models as you can start doing tattoos. Once again, this is extremely important for you to do. And this is why when you go ahead and get into these YouTube marketed businesses, it's just like, here's something that's making a lot of money and you should get into it and you can get into it. And then you find out later on, you don't really like it. That has happened to me. Uh, my first YouTube business, I was selling reselling stuff and I didn't like it. So I just gave away my Facebook group and just changed the content of my channel. And once again, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty much back at that space again because I just reset the channel. I just got rid of a whole bunch of videos and literally I'm starting over again because here's the thing. When you start your own business, you give yourself the license, you give yourself the ability to create whatever you want to create. So that first thing is just, you know, it may take you a few weekends, you know, literally sit down. Don't do this when you're stressed. 
stressed or tired, but just sit down and really, really think. And once again, you may write up one list and then later on, you may be in the shower and the ideal may come out of nowhere. Go ahead and add it to that list. All right, that's the first thing you do. Now, once you have worked out business models that you like, that you feel that you can do, the next step is to form an LLC, get an EIN, get a business banking account. Now, there are many people who's like, don't do this, start the business, see if you like it. Uh, once again, I feel that if you did the exercise correctly, you should be starting a business that you like. And this LLC is just part of it. Now, start the LLC, get the EIN, get the business bank account. If you have decent to very good credit, at this point, you can get your first business credit card, LLC, EIN, business bank account, and a business credit card. And you don't have to lie. You know, you can go there and it's like, look, you know, I'm thinking about starting this business. And you can tell the banker, like, this business hasn't started, so we haven't made any money. You don't have to lie. And you'll be shocked at what you can do, because if you have a decent credit score, you'll be shocked at what you can get in terms of business credit. So now that we have our ideal, we have uh, our proper framework, how do we get started? And I, good question. You should start off small. Number one, and let's talk about this. You are not quitting your job. Okay. I know there are many people here on YouTube who tell you to quit your job and put all your time, effort, and energy into your business. Uh, I feel that is foolish advice. I feel that for many people that is very unwise and that will come back to haunt you. So number one, we're keeping our job. And here's something else too. You know, I've never I've never been a person that had a job that I actually hated. So we don't know where you are with that, but go ahead, go to work, do your job to the best of your ability. And I'm gonna to explain to you why in a second. Do your job to the best of your ability, then come home and work on your business. Now, why do I say do your job to the best of your ability? This is something that's called creating a habit. And if you're not careful, you can create many bad habits habits. So you want to do your job to the best of your ability, come home and work on your ability, your business to the best of your ability. So we would start off really, really small. We would start off with Facebook. We would start off with Instagram. We would start off with the people that we know. I know that people are like, don't do that. But once again, you've never done this before and you're going to start off a business, whatever it may be, you know, you're going to, and this is one of the things, especially on Facebook, you're not going to send out a mass message. What you're going to do is copy and paste and send out individual messages. And you're going to do the same thing on Instagram. You're going to do the same thing on YouTube. You're going to do the same thing on TikTok. And this is just to see if the people that you know have any interest in whatever you're trying to put together. So this could go really bad that no one is interested. I will explain that in a minute. Or it can go really good where everyone is interested. So if it's bad and you're putting it out and no one that you know is interested, no one, not one person, what you need to do is go back to your sheet of paper and move to step number two. Because once again, you've written down 30 ideals, right? And number one, that's the item that you would charge. And then two, we would move to number two and we try it all over again. Because here's the thing. If absolutely nobody, nobody is halfway interested or you can't get a response, that is telling you something that this business model more than likely, number one, may be ill suited for your friends. That could be a possibility or it may actually be a terrible business. But here's the thing. As an entrepreneur, when you launch a business, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, this year, I've been doing some stuff and I've spent maybe $17,000 on things that have not worked. Let me say that again. I've recently spent $17,000 on things that have not worked. But once again, it's giving me information. It's giving me feedback. And once again, because I've been through this before, you know, before Hustlers Kung Fu, before the corporate game, I've launched many, many programs that didn't work. And that's something that you are going to have to learn how to deal with as an individual, as an entrepreneur. An ideal comes to your head, to the marketplace. The marketplace says, boo, we don't like that ideal. Okay, 
Okay, next. That's what you got to do. You got to be like Jalen Hurts in the Super Bowl when I think when he dropped that ball, I think that was the game because neither one of their defenses could stop either offense. And he had to let that go and just move on and play the rest of the game to the best of his ability, which he did. I thought it was a pretty good Super Bowl. And it literally boiled down to the last play at the last minute to decide who won that game. But one of the things is that you have to get into the habit of doing more than you think you need to do. We got a list, we've got our framework, and then we've got our testing phase. And then first ideal may not work. Okay, you're just like, that didn't work. Move to number two, move to number three, move to number four, move to number five. Now, once you find something on your list that is working, this is the time. Like, let's say you've been doing this for like last four weeks, you're down to item five, you hit your friends up and everyone's like, I like that. You, you, you're immediately, you have, it hasn't even been 24 hours when you sent the email out and you've got a whole bunch of people who are like, I like that. We're can I get a piece of that? That's telling you something very, very important that you have found on found out something that people are interested in. Because here's the thing. Uh, if no one is interested, now I'll, I'll share some with you. Whenever I go out and I put something, a course together, and this is something that I've learned over the years. And if I put it out in the first 24 hours, I don't get one response. That's telling me very important stuff because I can literally put together a paid advertising campaign. I can run a whole bunch of traffic on that and the results are pretty much going to be the same. I've spent a lot of money to promote something that people are not interested in. And once again, once I learned that, this is one of the things that I started to do that people just hated because I would literally get maybe one to 10 people who would be interested, right? I would kill it. I would kill it, delete it, and move it on and refund people's money because I already knew that based upon the lukewarm, tempted, that it wasn't gonna do well. They already knew this. So there was no point in putting a lot of energy, time, and effort behind that product. So I would just go ahead and move on because you, you guys know about Hustlers Kung Fu, you know about the corporate game. There are so many things I cannot even remember that I tried that did not work. Now, this is going to be a little crazy. Uh, recently, many of you have seen it. There there's a girl and her husband online talking about they made all of this money on Airbnb. And I have spoke about it because here's the thing. I have been doing a ton of research, information, driving, and looking up stuff about Airbnb. And I online said that I don't think that they made the majority of their money from Airbnb. I feel that they made 90% of their, their money from teaching. Well, there's another YouTuber by the name of Camille Azo, uh, Camille Azo, I'll, I'll put her picture up. And she actually did a deeper dive. And this is very interesting. She can find out about their story, but she cannot find their Airbnbs. She cannot find their Airbnbs, which is an extremely large red flag. This couple has had thousands of people pay them millions of dollars because of the hype of Airbnb. There's a YouTuber, Shelby Church, who put out multiple videos talking about her Airbnb lost money. The Airbnb crowd came after her and Shelby clapped back. And once again, getting into Airbnb and getting into one of these template businesses could be a very risky, bad thing for you to undertake under current marketplace dynamics. So why do I bring that up? Because there's so many people who are looking for an immediately, instantly hot business. You're looking for something that literally you put it out, you start making money, you don't have to work that hard, you don't have to deal with the stress. And as a 24 year entrepreneur, I'm trying to tell you something. If you can go ahead and deal with things not working out, things not working out, things not being easy, things not lining up. The more you deal with that, the greater your chance of success is. Let me say that again. When you get to the point where you can deal with things not working out, if you can deal with things not being in agreement, not being in alignment, and the more you deal with that to the point, I'll share a little story with you. When I used to do cold calling, I used to be deathly afraid to pick up the phone and call a stranger and have someone I didn't know tell me no. That used to 
to scare the mess out of me. And it got to the point where I got really good at cold calling, was talking to this guy, and he's like, don't call me again. He hung up. You know what I did? Do, 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 do. Dialed him right back. For some reason, sir, we were, we were disconnected, but like, and he started laughing and I got the appointment. Let me say that again. I was cold calling someone who hung up on me. I called him right back and got the appointment because I had gotten over my fear of rejection. It, it didn't matter to me. When I would go home, I wouldn't think of all the people who told me no. I wouldn't even think about them. I would just think about the people who told me yes. So you, you got to go ahead and get yourself set up where those little things just don't bother you because this is the hardest way to build a net worth for 3.5 to $5 million. Number one, sit down, write up your ideal. Number two, get your framework together. Number three, do small testing until you put out something where it becomes really hard for you to keep up with it. That's actually a good problem because you know, it's like, wait a minute, it's just me. At this point, you will hire someone and we'll be talking about that in future videos. But once again, this is the hardest way to get to a net worth of 3.5 to $5 million within 10 years is by starting a business and going through this simple exercise. Notice I did not say that you needed to spend thousands of dollars. Number one, plan it out. Number two, form a business. Number three, test it. Number four, get to that level where things are going and then you can actually opt out at that point. So I got some other stuff that's coming. Uh, end of March, I'm giving away, hold on, this laptop. It's brand new, still in the packaging. And I got some other stuff that I'm gonna put together. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit the notification for all videos and be sure to like this video because we got a lot more stuff coming and it's going to be extremely critical and pivotal for you to be successful in the future.